This conference will now yes. be recorded. Okay, welcome. Um, my name is Julie Noble, and this is a meeting of the April 14th Conservation Advisory Council. This meeting is being recorded, both video and sound. And all of the, uh, the video and the transcript written out will be available online uh, shortly after this meeting. So my name is Julie Noble, I'm the chair. We also have with us Kevin McAvoy, Emily Hauser, Sebastian Pilateri, Bet Abroad, and Lorraine Farina. Is there anyone from the public here? Okay, uh, so before we begin, I'd like to go over a few meeting guidelines to help us navigate the system as efficiently as respectfully as possible. Uh, if any members of the public do join us, we ask that they remain muted and off camera for the length of the meeting. And I have the ability to mute and unmute folks um, right now for all of us where you can stay uh, unmuted when you're speaking, but if you have background noise, make sure that you mute. Um, you can control your own mute buttons, but if I feel like you're getting out of control, I'm able to mute you all. <laughs> um, we can accept public speaking. If people want to, they can uh, join us with public speaking. If I want to uh, halt that from happening, I can also turn that off and people can submit comments through the chat. You can also submit comments through the chat at the up right, upper right uh, corner of your screen, the little chat button, you can submit comments either to everyone or just to one of us individually. Um, if you're having any audio issues, you can send me a text or you can send me a chat. And otherwise, uh, I will be posting all of the, the this recording on the city's website uh, probably in the next 24 hours. Uh, we appreciate everyone's patience during this difficult time and hopefully everyone's families are doing well. And does anyone have any questions about how the meeting will operate? Uh, the only thing I didn't understand was the muting part, Julie. It's Lorraine. Sure. So it, since we have a small meeting, you know, for the Common Council, they operate so only the person who, so the chair mutes everyone and then you raise your hand when you want to speak. I don't think that we need to operate that way. I think we can all be mindful of each other's speaking and not speak over one another. However, if I hear a lot of background noise, or if you all start arguing and speaking over another, I can mute everyone and then only unmute people individually. I see. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So um, I this meeting. Well, I just want to say I that to if you have, I just want to say if you have a dog or something in the background, you might want to keep your that this uh, a barking dog or something. You might want to turn the mute on. Um, so I'd actually, I'm going to call the meeting to order right now. It's 6.08 p.m. And we have quorum. Uh, Michelle is not here. I don't know if you have all heard, but um, she is sick. And so uh, we wish her the best and hope that she has a speedy recovery. Um, are there any modifications to the agenda? No. No. Oh, Casey is not here either. Um, Casey sent a note and I wasn't sure whether he was coming or not. It wasn't explicitly clear that he was going to make it. It seemed like that his mother had some um, medical issues. So uh, he, he's not here either, but maybe he'll join us in a little bit. I think he, I thought he said he was going to try to figure out how to get online. Seemingly um, he's not. I heard from him, Julie. I don't think he's going to be with us tonight. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so no modifications to the agenda. Then is there, are there any comments on the minutes? Thank you, Kevin, for putting those together. Nope. No, okay, so if there's no changes to the minutes or comments, uh, I need a motion to approve the March 10th CAC meeting minutes from 2020. Can I have a motion? motion? Raise your hand. Okay, Sebastian. And can I get a second? Emily? Okay, uh, all in favor? Say aye. I'm aye. I wasn't there. I wasn't there either. Okay. Lorraine. Betta and Lorraine are abstaining. And Kevin, Emily, and Sebastian, and I approve. So that is adopted. 
Thank you very much. Thanks, Kevin, for putting that together. Okay, so um, moving on to USGS Stream Gauge. Any updates? Uh, not for me in particular. I do feel like it will be. Um, I would kind of wanted to check back in with everyone to see what they thought about the presentation and, and kind of where to go from here. I felt like at the presentation it was a good explanation of all the benefits that come from it, but I kind of felt like everyone in the room was looking at the other person to see who would kind of be willing to to foot the bill for this type of thing. And so I guess I'm curious about like what can we do moving forward to see how this could advance. You know, we had talked about not having uh uh, employees from Kingston there because it would have been rather expensive um, and I guess only beneficial in the sense that they would have said that they supported something like this because more information is always better but not necessarily been in a position to make a decision about whether or not we set aside funding to actually you know provide for a stream gauge so there's no update update but I guess I'm just curious to hear what other people kind of thought might be a path forward um, with regards to the gauge. Hmm. Financing's been difficult, period. Yeah. We had all the discussions I've had, um, both with uh, Paul and Dan, and um, previously the emails back and forth to, to Gary Wall, and I just don't have the answer to it. Um, there, there, you know, other governmental agencies were discussed, but I don't know if there's any interest there or a political will right at this particular moment, but given everything else that's going on. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a big thing. And I guess yeah. uh, maybe my question, go ahead, Julie. Nope, go ahead. I was going to say, if we were thinking about, like, how would a request go forward if you're like, I think the city you know, it'd be great if the city wanted to pay for this. Would it be grabbing the ear of like an alder person in that area from the Rondout area and trying to get them to think about this type of a project, maybe have another presentation with them uh, to have them be able to put into like some sort of a budget to get money for it? I'm trying to think through. Gary was pretty clear. Well, I guess I shouldn't say that, but it seemed kind of clear from the presentation that like Kingston would be the people that benefit the most from this type of a a predictive capacity that the stream cage could have and so i guess trying to figure out within that framework okay if this is the place that'll benefit the most then how do we move the ball forward within the city potentially or within the county um yeah and i mean that's it you go i'm good Okay, um, so I mean, we had originally talked about bringing together a number of different stakeholders so that we can see if, you know, maybe multiple people can put the bill. I think at this yeah. point, it's going to be, we'll be hard pressed council to be, to be funding anything this year for sure. And to write in an additional, any amount of money into next year's budget is going to have to be extremely well justified. I mean, we're talking about some significant cuts already that we're going to be seeing this year, just as it is. So um, I, th I think it's all going to come down to funding. I don't think any of us question the utility of it. Um, yeah. How valuable? How valuable can we prove? Like, can we prove or demonstrate that? Demonstrate the value in a cost-benefit analysis. Like, how much savings would we have? Or when would we see like what would be the payback that would be worth it or is, is, is just the knowledge enough um and in a, in a time when we're so financially strapped how is how can we make that argument i i think it's going to be a tough one i think it might be our best bet to bring together a number of different stakeholders and not have one specific stakeholder foot the bill um but i don't know that mm -hmm. anyone's going to be prepared to foot the bill on anything at this point yeah I think we just need to keep this on the back burner and, and keep thinking about it and keep it on our uh, our longer work plan, our feet. And if there's things that, uh, you know, if there's other documents that we need to add them to, any kind of planning documents or anything, 
that we could make sure there's word wording and like it got into the sea level rise task force document um you know if something if there's other things coming up that are similar mm -hmm. i mean alternatively we can also look to pursue grant funding for it i don't know what grant might be available for that but possible that we could collaborate with other communities like Piermont or Catskill or other places um, that we're working with on the sea level rise, uh, like the flood um, resilience network and see if people want to go into a collaborative grant on it and then fund multiple communities. Hmm. Emily, did we lose your video? Hmm? And we, we, that wasn't actually a rhetorical question. We lost your video, Emily. Or maybe you turned it off. <laughs> Sorry, I had to put it, I had to take the camera off for a minute. Okay. Um, so I hear from Emily to put, you know, put this on hold for a little bit. What do other people think? That makes sense to me. I mean, it does kind of seem like a very, yeah, making the case for anything that's not directly related to dealing with what we're going through right now, it does seem like a very hard thing to do. And so I'm, I think it's definitely worthwhile to wait. And in the meanwhile, maybe, okay. I was gonna say, think about grants for my, yeah. Okay, anyone else? Sounds reasonable. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we will. Um, do you want me to take it off the agenda, like that back burner, or just put it on there? And if we have an update, we have an update. I think you can, we can take it off the bat. Take it off the agenda, and if there's an update, there's an update. Got it. Okay. Kevin, you're okay taking minutes while we do this? Yeah. Yeah. I've been doing this the whole time. Yeah. We're good on minutes. Good. And the benefit is you can look back at the transcript and see word for word what we say. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to abridge it a little bit, though. Perfect. OK, so moving on to Woodsville Air Quality Subcommittee. Lorraine, you want to give an update? Uh, yes. Um, the chair, Julie, and I met with um, Elias Duker and Marco Spodak and other Bard Air, Air Lab personnel. Um, on March 31st and April 6th and April 14th to discuss air quality monitoring in Kingston and the possibility of applying for grants. Um, and Julie, if you want to add anything to that, certainly please do. Um, the, the only other thing I wanted to say at the moment is that the website has been updated, thanks to Julie, to allow for more accessibility of the air quality information. So. Did you have anything you wanted to add, Julie, about those meetings or? No. Okay. Uh, Lorraine, uh, it was March 31st and what was the second date? Uh, April 6th and I'll send it to you, Kevin, and April 14th. Oh, okay. okay, okay, great, okay. Thank you. Yeah, so we, um, we're gonna be applying to a couple grants. Uh, for the Pollution Prevention Institute and also a NYSERDA grant to, uh, to pull together uh, funding for more air quality monitors and also to, that will be the NYSERDA grant and then Pollution Prevention Institute grant will be for uh, education surrounding the air quality data that we collect. And are they measuring anything now? Yes. So Lorraine has some at her house, one inside and outside, and I have one at my house, one inside and outside. And then there's the one on the Andy Murphy Center. Um, and so the new grants will, will um, if we get the grants and they're successful, that we'll have more. And we, we actually had a meeting today to go over locations for uh, around the city of where we would put these air quality monitors. But yes, uh, at the instant that we installed them, um, 
they're collecting, and Lorraine will have to help me remember, but they're co collecting temperature, humidity, PM 2.5, PM 10, um, carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. VOCs. 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 Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, yeah. And um. so it tells you live and also plots it over time. So it was very interesting. As soon as I plugged mine in, it showed my carbon dioxide in my house to be very high. So we're exhaling a lot of air. <laughs> mm. um, and, uh, and my house is very tight. And so it was interesting. Um, over time, though, a couple of days, it seemed to like even itself out. So it seemed like maybe it was equalizing in the machine. But um, it was very interesting to see because there's like a little information on the screen about what the levels mean. And, and it's like a round disk and it shows a number and then it tells you if it's like in the green, in the orange, in the red, in the red, in the red. And um, yeah. it's, uh, it's a little frightening. <laughs> but it's, it's, I love it. I can watch it all day. Yeah, it's fascinating. It is um, actually seems to be the case with these that they they settle in with the CO2 after a few days. But um, but it is true that you know our house is very tight too, and um, when you're cooking, the CO2 really does go quite high inside the house. Yep. And that's because you're using uh, natural gas. Uh, it's because we're just using up um, oxygen by the cooking mm -hmm. process, yeah. Um, uh, also, if so there are, which there are not now in anybody's home, a lot of people, but if there are a lot of people in the house, the CO2 level would be very high as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. anyway, it's so, uh, uh, sorry, go ahead. Nope, you go. Nope, that was all I had to say. Is it is the information uh, does it does it track real time and is and is it going over to Bard real time? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. It is live and they can see anything that's happening. So the, the day that I got it, I was telling them the other day I cooked up some some of those like meat or not meatless sausage things. I was making sausage and peppers. And they left those meatless sausage things on the stove too long and it started getting like crispy and the house just filled with <laughs> smoke. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, the people at Barton were getting some kind of like warning, warning, Julie's having a fire in her house. And uh, I can't wait to see uh, what the data looks like for that. So, will be it. Yeah. So, um, yeah. anyway, the grants are at the end of May and uh, that's where we are with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on that? Nope, that's it. Okay. Um, NRI and Open Space Project. Kevin, you did an amazing job putting together the environmental assessment form. Do you want to just speak to that? Um, yeah, I think the, well, uh, yeah, I had to research the, go back and research the new CEQA uh, situation and, you know, how to fill the form out. Yeah. Um, and basically what we did was I, if people want to comment on, if you want to send it around, they may, people may want to comment on the project description. I mean, I, I okay. took it from various different documents like the NRI itself, the open space plan, uh, the, the council revel resolutions. I took it from documentary sources, but I kind of combined them and morphed them together. So yeah, again, people may want to comment on that. Uh, I also looked at the agencies. Uh, I mean, the, well, the agencies, yeah, we could take a look at that, but I think we got those. Uh, the other issue that I think we had was city approved plans. Um, I pulled that from various sources. There was one that I wasn't sure if it was ever formally adopted, and that was the McBroom report in um, on the 12th scale, the title roundout report. You know, I, it's not really clear was, because for some reason on. I can only ever find drafts. It it, it was only a draft. I don't. I, I let me look into it. 
Yeah, okay. That was my one issue. I, I picked that up from Greg Swansea, putting that on the BOA. And uh, yeah. it was pending at the time when he did that. And I remember going to the final meeting, but I don't, and, but the plan, the copy of the plan that's on, that I have says draft on it. So I don't know if it ever got submitted to the council. The only copies uh, that I have say draft. Yeah, I don't know if any of that's fatal. I mean, including that in there, you know, should be okay, you know, regardless. Most of the boxes, okay. you check no, that's basically it. So yep. uh, part one should come from us. Part two and part three, I filled out a draft, but may just want to table that because really the, the lead agency, which is the Common Council, should fill that out, not us. And I, I don't want to be presuming, um, you know, anything and have somebody say, well, you know, you guys are doing the whole thing yourself and that's not right. You know, just as a matter okay, of protocol. Okay, so mm -hmm. I'll circulate this for comment and what... Do you know if we're working under a timeline right now? No, I don't. It hasn't been included on any of the agendas. And uh, given the whole COVID thing, I mean, I'm just wondering if the normal CEQA rules are, I mean, this, this, the Common Council as a lead agency hasn't really acted further on this. That's what I'm trying to say. Right, okay. Well, I will circulate this in, within the CAC for comments, and then I will check in with um, the council, I guess with Andrea about the um, timing, or yeah, maybe with Kevin Bryant. Yeah, or, or Suzanne or, or Dan, you know, somebody that has this off the top of their okay. head. So I think okay. it's in the, we, we've done, we're doing what we should be doing, and then you know, they, uh, they need to do what they need to do after that. Well, okay. Perfect. Well, then, will this be kind of simultaneous? So, if we need to meet a deadline, you'll let us know on that. Uh, me? We, yes. No, uh, Julie. Sorry. Oh, oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I will do that. Anything else on NRI and open space? No, that should be it for me. Thank you, Kat. <laughs> um. Street trees and canopy. The tree commissioning was canceled this week, um, this month rather. And I know that, I don't know for certain that the tree removal project is done, but I think it's done. Um, the trees are all down the Broadway as well. Yep. And we, can all, we can all doing? mourn the loss of the, <laughs> of the big trees by the Y. Trees by the Y. Yep. Um, so uh, they're definitely in a loss currently uh, where we are in the projects, but ultimately all these projects have a plan for planting more. Uh, but I don't really have anything else to report besides what's sort of obvious already. Does anyone else have anything? Are they, what's the, are they able to do any work? Who's so, um, Oh, I don't know anyone who's working with excavators or any other work that is, is it allowed or, I, I don't go out during the day, so I'm not noticing. Okay. Yep, so um, the original executive order was um, only essential construction was able to continue, other construction all had to stop. So that applied to the city as well, which means things like the LED project stopped, Kingston Point Park project stopped, Deed Stadium, all that stopped. Um, the only things that were essential we were able to keep going were like bridges, roads, um, affordable housing. Those things were able to continue, which means that all of the road projects that you see uh, have continued. However, the new executive order that came out just about a week or so or even less than a week ago, maybe Friday, opens up, exempts government from uh, that construction limitation. So all of our projects are now reopening and they just have to practice um, safe social distancing. So all of our other projects are gonna proceed assuming that the contractors would like to. 
So there was not really any halt on like Broadway or 587 or any of those projects. Well, not any halt from the perspective of they were permitted to keep going if they had like any internal, you know, people that were sick or whatever. I, I don't know. I'm not sure that any of those really slowed down. I, I haven't seen any slowdown. Okay. Anything else on trees? Any update on New York, New Jersey Harbor and tributary storm surge barriers? Uh, the only thing I found was, and this came from uh, the waterfront group in New York City, which is an alliance that, and I think, uh, I think Riverkeeper had signed on to this as well, was a request for funding to be restored. And that was dated uh, the end of February. So I couldn't find anything further after that. And I don't know if Sebastian, if you found anything further, I haven't. No, and not in terms of actions either for municipalities. That, that's that. And okay. Anything else on that? Uh, anything, any updates on the Sopus Creek? I don't have any. Um, uh, I just, I want to report that I, I went out. Uh, I know that there was going to be a trip out there on the 14th or Friday the 13th, I think. I don't know if people went on that, but I did go a week later. Uh, so I would say it was about the 21st and the water was so high that we were able to make it uh, through all the debris uh, going down river. <clears throat> and what? yeah, so... So that was pretty amazing. Was there was no issues at all. It really does depend on the water water level. Wow. Did you uh, take pictures? Nope. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I might have sure. some pictures that Greg Shaheen forwarded to me from the trip that he did with the Talamans and Mary McNamara, or maybe a, maybe Mary uh -huh. McNamara. Go. I don't know if Mary went or not, but Greg went, and I believe the Talermans went. That would have been the yeah, March. I got it. You have those photographs? Oh, okay, then you're then you're yep. all good. Um, subsequent okay. to that, Nora had sent me uh, two documents from Hudsonia, which might pertain. Well, one of them is more of a soil. Uh, wetland thing, but it has to do with the uh, seed sowing farm area. But she also sent me the full and complete final report on the bio uh, uh, diversity assessment training that you, Julie, did like 10 years ago. Previously, I'd yeah. only seen that. That might be something uh, that, that the group that's looking at the Sopus Creek may want to um, take a, you know, take a quick look at at some point. Okay. I can I can send that over to uh, Amanda and Mary and Doc. Okay, yeah, it came from Hudsonia. The, this thing on the seed song farm that might be confidential. I don't know. Somebody else paid for that, and it's not really um, made public. But this one, I think you guys all and you know were on this, and so it's Kyla. And, you know, yeah. So I think yep. it's okay. Make that public. Okay. Okay. Anything else? on that no not for me any updates on pedestrian street no no okay um any new business that we didn't add anything to the agenda so there shouldn't be any any communications any announcements or events <laughs> uh, any reports from complete streets uh, yeah there'll be a meeting tomorrow I'll be attending uh, they are doing them bi-monthly now so yeah. great um, Casey's not here so I don't even know if did the planning board meet last month anyone know hmm. Yeah, I think they did. I'd have to go back and look at it, but. Hmm. 
Well, we can get a report next month from him. There, there was something uh, on Kingstonian that came out. It's a, and you can find it on the city website. The uh, ZBA issued a, an opinion or a decision on the matter. Okay. That, that was on the zoning issue that was, um, you know, under discussion, had been brought to them. And mm -hmm. it, it, it's worded, uh, I found it interesting the way they worded it. Uh, they ruled in favor of Eric Kitchen's decision, but they seem to refer it back to the council to amend the zoning resolution uh, with respect to affordable okay. housing. Yeah. Planning board's current agenda is posted on, on the city website. I'd have to find it if you need uh, to know what day it is. Uh, I don't want to hold no, us up looking for that. It's somewhere on my hard drive. Okay. All right, thanks for the update, Kevin. Um, public safety, we don't have anything from public safety, right? Uh, not me, no, and Michelle has been out of commission, so that's, no. Okay, anything from zoning? Yes, um, that's pretty much been tabled for the moment. Uh, Jeffrey sent us all an email to the task force. And um, you know, to that effect, ahead of the common council meeting, and then I understand that they did uh, table it for the moment. And it has a pretty hefty price tag. So like everything else, I, you know, that's on hold for, for uh, the time being. And the, the other matter that was discussed about Kingstonian, and the, the recommendation that ZBA meant, had a, a sent, that would refer to the old old or current zoning, and it would be a sort of an amendment to the 1961 comp plan as opposed to the new zoning, which would be um, for the new comp plan, the Kingston 2025. Hmm. So is it on hold because of COVID? I think it's on hold uh, for the because of the large price tag. And okay. it'll have to be discussed when the COVID uh, protocols, uh, you know, when we pass the peak and uh, we're on the downward trend on it. So, but I think in the paper they did announce that they had selected a contractor, which uh, is new in the last month. Oh, uh, no, I, I think that was before the last meeting. I just didn't announce no, it because, because it's, the it's, yeah, it's not in the minutes. So, right. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it was Dover Cole. That was who who it is. Yeah, that would be the and the Nolans from Pace Law are involved. They're they're the uh, they would be the legal team. David Gilmore is on on the team, and Mr. Cole, who uh, hmm, seems to be uh, very well versed in form based code, and they seem to understand all the different plans that we were that we discussed including the climate action plan and making uh, recommendations and, and doing zoning consistent to the recommendations in the climate action plan that refer to zoning. They seem to understand the historic preservation aspects. They seem to understand the open space plan. Um, it, it looked good. It's just a matter of uh, the price tag and the timing. Okay. So I guess we're Gonna wait and see on that one. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else have anything on zoning? Um, Climate Smart. The meeting was canceled for March, but we plan on having it in April uh, remotely. Uh, EMC. The EMC meeting was also canceled. I, I do want to just give a shout out to the Department of the Environment because they are taking the lead in the um, in the resilient Ulster project, so they are working very hard. So that's they where are. they're they're matching uh, contributions and funding and 
for food and restaurants and so on and whatever else that is. Mm -hmm. Quite an undertaking. Uh, and the three commission meeting was canceled for April. Are there any other reports or updates? No. Okay, well, then I need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Oh, all right. Right. Okay. Good Emily? Okay. Second. Emily? Yeah. Is everyone in, all in favor of adjourning? Say aye. Okay. Yeah. Aye. Aye. Okay. It is six November. Yeah, that was fast. Wow. <laughs> I, I was a little okay. scared when I saw the six to eight on the calendar, but. <laughs> Well, I hope that everyone stays safe and uh, and that your families are good, well and that we can see each other again soon. I'm going to end the recording now and I hope that everyone has a great night. Okay. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.